This is the setup video for the Synapse for pre-flight, and I will discuss the center of gravity location, reflex for the elevons, the thrust angle, the electronics, and landing skids and other means of reinforcing the bottom of the aircraft. Now the first is the matter of the center of gravity. In the build videos I've discussed locating the center of gravity eight inches aft of the very nose of the wing, which is essentially the same as these wing tie downs for your visual reference right now. I've marked this blue stripe at eight inches aft. This is the do not exceed center of gravity rear of that unless you're an excellent uh, pilot and an expert builder. At this location is, an, is a great uh, compromise of efficiency and stability. Moving the center of gravity anywhere forward from that will improve stability, but it will decrease flight efficiency due to the need of uh, trimming and additional reflex with the elevons. I would recommend not going forward of six inches aft of the nose, and that'll provide a very stable plane with just very gentle pitch movements, uh, but it also requires additional reflex to keep it uh, in flight, and that detracts from the efficiency. To determine the center of gravity, load the plane in its flight configuration, including the batteries, any electronics, um, FPV gear if you're going to use that, and simply balance it on your fingers with an equivalent location on both of the wings until the lower surface of the wing and the fuselage are parallel with the ground. You've noticed here I've got the center of gravity six inches aft of the nose, and that's in the very stable but not quite as efficient as it could be location. I do have two instead of one batteries in place, which accounts for the additional weight forward of the center of gravity. The second issue is of the reflex of the elevons. Being a flying wing with no tail surfaces, there must always be some down force behind the center of gravity to provide the up pitching moment to maintain the uh, incidence of the wing to the relative wind. That's what causes most of the lift. And so the elevons will, if anything, always be parallel with the lower surface of the wing or up. What I found with this center of gravity, it's six inches aft of the nose, is that the apparent angle on the upper surface of the wing is about 15 degrees. It's a little problematic to measure this because of the camber of the upper surface of the wing is different. You may get a different measurement. What's really more reliable, although more subtle, is lower, measuring the lower uh, surface, and that is about five degrees of reflex. I recommend trimming this, if anything, slightly up more than down for the maiden flight so that if, if on takeoff, if anything, it will climb and not just crash into the ground. It should be identical between the two elevons to start, although you may need to trim to compensate for the torque imparted by the motor, which may um, cause a roll. So trim that in during flight. Don't try to guess at it on the ground. Another note on reflex is the more upward reflex is needed to compensate for a forward CG, the more dependent the pitch behavior of the plane will be on your airspeed. That is to say, when the plane speeds up, it will tend to climb, and when you decrease power and thus airspeed, it will tend to descend more so. By moving the center of gravity rearward, less reflex is needed in the elevons. Therefore, the plane will more go fast with addition of power and slow down with decreasing power, but won't tend to climb and descend as much. For initial travel for the elevons, I recommend about 30 degrees when measured on the top surface which is equivalent to about half an inch of travel for a two inch elevon. Down travel can be significantly less to provide some elevon differential and it can be from one quarter to one half inch down. The expo settings for the elevator and the synapse are more dependent on the center of gravity location you choose. For the six inches rear, I like to use zero expo as the plane is already very stable in pitch. For the seven inches aft of the nose, center of gravity location, I like to use 30% expo. And for the eight inches rear, which is the most efficient but also the most responsive to pitch inputs, I like to use 50% expo just to provide good precise control around the center stick position. Dual rates and expo for the synapse are largely a matter of personal taste but I find that a dual rate of 75% for normal flight and 100% for aerobatics and takeoff uh, and landing are recommended if that's your style. Expo is about 30% as a matter of choice. 
For the electronics, my chosen configuration is one 4,000 or two 2,200 milliamp hour batteries on this tray with a little stop, which I've comprised of a gift card, bent in an L, stuck to the bottom, video transmitter, video camera. The goal here is generally to place the batteries as far back towards the center of gravity as possible, and then of course the camera in the front. There are many variations of this, use your discretion on that. I like to put some landing skids on the bottom only because I land on asphalt, and this is simply a gift card bent over adhered to the bottom so that this gets scuffed up and abraded instead of the bottom of the aircraft. Since the center of gravity is actually right here, the rear one takes most of the abuse, and it should be stuck to the bottom of the plane, and if you use any tape that has any thickness at all, such as two-sided tape, be sure to bend the front up very slightly so that it's firmly and and intimately up against the bottom of the plane. If it's lipped down at all like that, it will tend to attract dirt and debris and crap under there and sometimes rip right off. Speed control, your discretion, but I do recommend recessing it and keeping it well above the lower surface of the plane or mounting it on the side. Now some more details on the thrust angle of your motor. Now some climbing and descending tendency is always going to be present relative to the airspeed of the aircraft. And of course the airspeed is related to the power input but as far as acceleration and deceleration changes in pitch relative to the thrust angle, there are two important considerations for the thrust angle. One is the aerodynamic center, which I've indicated approximately with this green piece of tape, and that is the calculated location wherein half of the aerodynamic surface of the wing, and if the whole airframe to be more detailed, is forward of that line and half of it is behind that line. That is, any aerodynamic or thrust force that's applied through that line, perpendicular to it, will result in either a pitching down or a pitching up moment for the aircraft. So ideally, the thrust line of the motor should intersect the lower surface of the wing at the aerodynamic center, which is right here, just below the surface of the upper portion of the fuselage where the motor is, is mounted. The second consideration is the center of gravity, and not just on this axis, but also on the longitudinal axis. Since the mass of the aircraft is below the upper surface of where the wing joins, consequently where the motor is, the center of gravity isn't perfectly straight down from the motor mount, but actually at a slight angle. So you'll see when I hang the plane, it doesn't point straight down, it actually angles up about three degrees that way as I'm hanging it from the center point of the shaft. That's about three degrees, which is how I determine the three degrees thrust angle so that when any force is applied by adding power, that force will be applied directly through the center of mass and cause neither the plane to pitch up or pitch down in response to that added force.